Would you like to learn how to make an accent wall for your home? Please stick around and see how my husband and I put this one together. First, I'd like to ask for you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me and allows me to continue making more videos like this for you. Thank you so much and let's get started. My name is Delia Ramirez. The first thing I wanna show you is the before picture of my living room wall, the one that we will be working on. Here you'll see a draft of the design that I made for the wall. I took measurements of the whole wall so that I could then transfer the measurements onto the grid paper to get the grid paper to scale so that I could then transfer back the design into the wall. So I took measurements of the length, the width um, from wall to wall, from wall to fireplace, from the fireplace to the ceiling, from the floor to the molding, you know, from the window to the, um, to the fireplace. I took measurements of the TV that was gonna be up above the fireplace. Every single measurement you could take to transfer it onto the grid paper so that you can get an accurate, you know, kind of two scale drawing of your wall so that then you can easily make a design that you can transfer back to your wall uh, that would fit. Each of the squares, the tiny squares of that grid paper turned out to be 3.6 inches. Um, and I worked off of that, but you can make the design directly onto the wall if you prefer, instead of having the design on paper first. I opted to go that route. I drew the design onto the paper. I actually printed several copies of that layout first so that I could do several designs. And between my husband and I, we opted to go with this design. And then we started transferring the image right onto the wall. And because I knew the distance from you know the sides, I could then put the design exactly as I had it in the paper. So while I started putting up the design onto the wall with painter's tape, my husband started moving the electrical wires and cable wire to above the fireplace where the TV was to be mounted. Once I finished taping up the design on the right half of the wall since he was working on the left, I started cutting out the design. Um, and I'm showing you here that what I used was Royal Moldings. I went to my local big box store and ended up having to use that Royal Molding instead of the MDF that I went to get because they didn't have any in stock. So this worked out great. It was kind of flexible so that you can easily move if you needed to bend it slightly. Um, and it's thin enough and looks great on the wall. The other benefit of it is that it came in white, which meant that I didn't have to prime it before I painted it. So before taking off the tape um, or even making the cuts, I traced with a pencil around the edges of the blue painter's tape that I had taped on the wall so that I could keep the design there in pencil so that I would know where to put back the moldings that I pre-cut. Um, and so what I did was I removed, after tracing it, I would remove the tape, place that tape centered on the piece of molding, and then I would make the cut. I used my husband's miter saw, DeWalt miter saw to make these cuts, and then I would put the molding right back on the wall after I cut it um, using my Ryobi brad nailer. Once he finished working on the electrical and moving the cables above the fireplace, then he started painting while I continued making cuts. Um, he corked the edges of the moldings before painting and then painted over it. Here you see him cutting the top edge of the moldings that I had laid out because I made the mistake of going all the way to the ceiling, forgetting that I did want to put a frame around the whole wall. So he made those cuts. Um, and from then on, I continued putting the moldings without that border at the bottom. Here you see me um, in my bandsaw making a concave cut to this piece of molding, which is going to look like an arrow. 
because these cuts are inward, I had to make them in the bandsaw versus the miter saw. I then sanded it so that it wouldn't have a rough edge and there you see it. Now we're about halfway done here. I've already put up all of the molding. My husband is continuing to cork them and the only left cor uh, molding that we have to do is the border, which we did last. Um, he here is painting, is corking, and on the other side, he's already finished corking and painting. So while he continued doing that, I started making the cuts for the border that was gonna go all the way around the wall. And what I did here was use a contour gauge to get the design of that window sill um, to the left of the window to get the exact design that I needed to cut out of the molding. So I, um, using the contour gauge, I traced the um, shape right onto the molding and then I used the bandsaw to cut it out. And here you see how it fit on the edge of that window and right under the moldings that were already up on the wall. So here I came back, I did the other side and you can see here that that's the shape. I traced it with pencil and then also cut it out with the bandsaw. You can see how this side fit in. It's not an exact perfect cut, um, but I'm not worried about that because that will be covered when you cork it. And here you can see once it's put on the wall, it looks pretty good and the corking hid any imperfection. So while I worked on the odd cuts, my husband was working on the straight cuts um, and was finishing uh, nailing the moldings of the border all the way around. Once he finished with that, he started fixing the wall that he had broken up so that he could move the wires up um, for the TV. And while he did that, I started spackling the holes that the Brad Nailer uh, leaves in the moldings so that once it got painted over, you wouldn't see um, any indentation of the moldings. So we worked together as a team. He did one thing, I did another until we finally got it done. The only thing left to do now after spackling was painting. So he had already corked all of the moldings. I spackled them all. He painted everything. He also, if you can see here, the difference in color on the left and the right at the bottom, um, he painted the bottom below the moldings um, in white, bright white versus the kind of eggshell white we had before and or elegant white uh, we had before. And you can see how much brighter it turned out and um, made the accent wall stand out, pop out much more. So everything is done now. The only thing that we still had left to do at this point was change the light fixtures. We decided we wanted to change the lights. And so we had not yet bought the new lights we wanted, so it took us a few days to get that done. But other than that, the wall is completely done. The accent wall looked great. We were very excited, very happy, um, and proud of the work we had done. It is an easy job that you can do in a couple of days if you have the right tools, and you don't have to have a lot of experience in woodworking to do it. Um, you really don't. Um, it's, it's very um, easy to do. So I hope you all 
get a chance to uh, design a wall in your home um, and get working um, and put it together. It's time consuming, yes. It's very labor intensive, yes. But when it's done, it looks amazing and you will be so proud of what you've done. So here it is at the end, we bought the light fixture and ended up changing it to those, um, which caused us, because the light fixture was slightly smaller than the one that we previously had on the wall, it caused us to have to um, use some compound around the wall and cover up and then repaint around the fixture so that the new one would look uh, perfect. So there it is, finally completely finished um, with the border and all painted and the bottom painted in white. It just looks wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, I really would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. I'll be um, doing as many videos as I can of any of the projects that um, I work on. Um, not only woodworking projects, but um, crafting projects. So if you are interested, please subscribe. Um, but definitely, please leave me a like. That'll let me know that you like these kinds of videos and I would be more than happy to make more of them. Thank you. I also welcome any feedback, any comments you want to uh, send my way. Uh, letting me know whether there was anything uh, different I could have done, anything better I could have incorporated into the wall, any other way of making it. If you are a pro at making accent walls, maybe people can learn um, from my mistakes or from your comments, any additional skills that could help them uh, do a better wall. Um, so thank you again. Looking forward to having you at the next video. Have a blessed day.